Hello, all you fine friends of aviation. This is Elliot Flourish. We're doing a video today that's uh, introducing a new concept of an engine failure to a low IFR landing. So we're simulating a, uh, a problem with the engine over the Central Valley with Thule fog. We've got about a 200 foot overcast and one mile visibility is the simulation. We're gonna pretend like we're not flying a Cirrus. Obviously with the ballistic recovery system in this airplane, it would be uh, all too easy to uh, just find ourselves in an area that's clear of, of any uh, residential areas, find uh, an area that's primarily fields, and pull the parachute. That would be a very safe way to go about it. But we're going to pretend we're in some other aircraft that still has synthetic vision in the G1000. We're going to demonstrate how nicely we can use these avionics to get us to the ground. Uh, in an aircraft that does not have a ballistic recovery system. So now at this point we've gone through the restart procedures and none of that seems to have worked. We're going to go back to the fullest tank. We're going to brief the passengers, make sure everybody's uh, buckled up, belts are tight, our seats are in the landing position with the seats upright. Uh, we're going to call our mayday and we hold the, the comm button down, the toggle button that sequences 121.5 in automatically and we're going to make our Mayday call. That's uh, Cirrus 402 Charlie Kilo. Uh, it seems we're having an engine failure. Three souls on board were a white Cirrus SR-22, and uh, we're going to be attempting an emergency landing at the Merced Airport. We may end up uh, pulling the parachute, uh, or actually in this scenario, we're going to pretend like we don't have one. Dispatch emergency equipment, please. We'd like uh, ambulance and fire trucks rolling to the Merced Regional Airport. And we're going to squawk at this point, 7700. So we go to the transponder, 7700, and that'll help them to see that we've got a problem here. Other sectors that surround Merced Airport will be able to see that they should keep aircraft out of this area. Uh, then we're going to come up to the shutdown procedure. So we did the best we could to try to restart this engine. Now we have to come to grips with the reality that we're, we're going to end up having to either land this airplane or uh, in other aircraft, maybe pull the parachute. Uh, at this point, we're confirming that we're still at best glide. We're over a suitable landing spot. Mixture at this point comes to idle cutoff. So we pull that mixture right off, and we're going to pull the boost pump off the fuel selector, we pull the pin and bring it to the off position and the ignition goes off. And that's just to secure things so that we don't have as much of a risk of fire upon touchdown. We would also turn off the electrical at the end there just to make sure that uh, there's no potential spark from the electrical system. Okay, so we're still spiraling down. Everything looks good. We're at 6,500 feet. And uh, the nice thing about this altitude is it gives me time to really start looking at the, the winds at the surface and decide which runway is most favorable. So we can see here that uh, winds are 0, 1, 0 at 3, so that clearly favors runway 30 there at Merced, visibility 7 miles. So we're going to pretend like the conditions are a lot worse than that, uh, but still favoring the same runway. That's runway 30. And uh, so we've gone through all the shutdown procedure. We're going to go ahead and tuck this away. Again, making sure, looking around, making sure all the passengers are secured and they're well briefed. And uh, we'll go back to the map page. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assist with this low ceiling situation. We're really going to need to have an approach set up. And I'll show you how to use a GPS approach to help you to use synthetic vision to do this. This procedure really needs to be practiced over and over to be able to consider it to be something that you could actually utilize. So we just load any GPS approach and just enter, enter, enter right through all the steps. And then uh, we can just activate that final approach leg. And actually we probably activate the leg inside of it, this, this next leg here which is uh, the leg from the final approach fix to the threshold. So we'll activate that. What we're looking to do is for every 1,000 feet up that we are above ground level, and that ground level is, according to this, 155 feet. So for every 1,000 feet above the airport, we want to be about a mile off, and you can think about that both ways. Like right here, if we we're on final, we'd like to be uh, just about five nautical miles on final. So now I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about going to downwind, and we're going to try to set ourselves up in a position to uh, to be able to use the synthetic vision to help us out with this maneuver. So I'm going to go to a heading of 120. That's going to set us up nicely for this, 
and uh, you can see right now we're about a mile wide on our downwind, which is a good width. Anywhere between a mile and three quarters while, uh, wide looks great. And you can see we're about one mile from the threshold there. RW30 is the threshold of the runway. That's where we're going to be aiming for. And so right now, if we were on final at 1.3 miles out, we'd want to be 1,300 feet above the ground. Uh, and that would be adding another 150, which is the uh, ground elevation. So we're going to go a little further out. And that'll give us a little more final to play with, which helps. Firming again that we've got the right frequency in there, 122.7. That looks good. So we're two miles out. So we'd want to be on final at 2,100. So you can see these two numbers are starting to converge together. 2,300 plus another 150, that's going to be about 2,600. So we're at 4,800, and the, the two numbers are starting to narrow up. So now at this point, we want to make sure that we don't get these cylinders too cold. We've, we've cooled things down successfully uh, to around 260 degrees. I'm just going to keep this leaned out a little bit so that we don't get things too cold. So for me to be able to simulate the proper descent rate for an engine failure, I'm going to I'm going to do that simulation by putting in a notch of flaps early. This enables me to keep the power up. And it's a good trick for allowing you to simulate an engine failure without cooling the engine too much. And that note is really more for the flight instructors out here that are practicing this. So now we're at 4,300 is what our target is. And we're at 4,300 uh, elevation. So now we want to disconnect and start hand flying it. And we're going to turn around and try to get right towards the threshold and intercept final. So at this uh, elevation, we should have no problem catching up uh, because we're at close to a 10 degree angle, which is steeper than our normal best glide angle. Uh, and we should be able to catch up with that number so that the 4.7 starts to come down and starts to come down with, uh, with the uh, so 4.641, and we want to really be at uh, uh, 4,700 right now. So we'll, you can see the runway now starting to show up there. I'm going to get myself aligned with final here. And we're just going to hold something a little closer to best glide here, a little bit more nose down, and uh, try to get ourselves caught up with that, uh, that uh, equation that we're talking about. So it's a lot of mental math. Uh, it's probably a lot more mental math than most people are going to want to think about. Uh, but you can see that these are starting to narrow up together. I'm going to pull the power back a little bit more just to simulate the proper descent rate at best glide. And now we're starting to catch up where we want to be at 3,800 at, um, at this point. So we're at 3,600 uh, really. So we're still just a little on the low side. So we're just going to keep going without the extra drag and without the slip at this point. Now we're getting to the point where we want to be um, starting to think about steepening up this descent rate. OK, so we've caught up with our equation here. Now we're exactly 150 feet above the 3,200 that we want to be at now. So now we're going to have to start diving. So you see that flight path indicator. As we start diving that flight path indicator down to the threshold, we need to, if we see that airspeed starting to increase, we're going to go to full flaps. And I can see that it is starting to increase. And we may even have to go to a little bit of a slip here. All right, so we just keep that right on the threshold. And if any of you have ever flown uh, GPS approach, you know how to use this and the flight path indicator in order to keep yourself on target. So we're simulating, I'm under the hood here uh, so that I can't see outside and I'm just trying to practice getting the airplane down to that threshold, keeping the speed relatively in check and then slipping as necessary in order to keep that speed where it needs to be. So uh, this looks pretty good. We're descending uh, kind of steeply. This is because I've put in full flaps at this point. And uh, you can use drag as you need to in order to steepen it up. And Merced traffic, Cirrus is on a two mile final simulating engine failure for runway 30 Merced. So we're still keeping that equation 1.6 to about uh, 150 above that, which would be 1650. So we're just a little high on that. So we'll drop the nose a little lower. And we can use slip as necessary at the end here. Merced traffic, uh, where is your position? Merced traffic, Cirrus is one mile final, runway 30, and we're recording a video right now. Are you on uh, in the run-up area?
you there, Merced. That's affirmative. We are Roger holding for three zero. Roger that, and uh, we'll be full stop three zero, Merced. Okay, so at this point we're start, starting to feel like we're pretty high, so we're going to go ahead and slip a little bit. So we can still slip, full slip to the threshold, and you can see as the airplane starts to get sideways, you Six really have rates. to. Uh, uh, Apply Four, a lot of rubber five. and aileron in order to keep that flight path indicator on the target. So Pull we're we're completely up. sideways here, but we're still right on target to that threshold. Pull All right. up. At some point here, hopefully we're going to pop out of the clouds soon, and we're going to take a look up. and we're going to see outside. Or we're going to come into a landing. Okay, so we just popped out of the clouds, and now visually looking out over the nose, we can see that we've got a lot of runway left here. So we're just going to bring the nose up and gradually bring it to a touchdown. Flaps come up, brakes come on, and we've got a lot of useful runway ahead of us. Uh, that was a pretty good landing for an emergency, but normally you'd be turning the electrical off just to keep from, uh, if you were landing harder than that, you wouldn't want a ignition source. And that concludes our video for today. Elliot Flair signing off. Good day. Woo! Yay!